People of America, stop what you are doing because of all of the issues swirling around us in our world every single day. The one story that I plucked out of the chaos to discuss today on my podcast, which I only record once every few weeks, so I have to be really selective with what I choose because there's a lot to choose from. The one I want to discuss is Hamilton 68. Wait, who are they? You might be thinking, look at all the stories we have. We have a bombshell video of a Pfizer employee talking about some shenanigans they're pulling with the pokey pokey. We have Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi fortuitously cashing in about $3 million worth of her Google stock days before the government announces a lawsuit against Google. Lucky Nancy. We've learned about corrupt Ukrainian spending on lavish vacations funded not by the non-existent Ukrainian economy, but instead by yours truly, the American taxpayers. You're welcome, I guess. We've seen the U.S. cross a red line and green light sending offensive tanks to the Ukraine as our nuclear threat level is about as high as it can possibly get. We've seen the government tell us that eggs are what's causing the massive uptick in blood clots. I guess those saucy little chickens suddenly make eggs more clotty than they used to be. Why, you might ask, would you think we care about some random think tank called Hamilton 68? How do they come up with that name, by the way? It just sounds lazy to me, like one of those auto-generated programs that spits out some benign name and they type in like a name and a number, please. Collins 42, mm, now. Thomason 521, eh. Billy Bob A1, mm, definitely not. Hamilton 68? Yeah, that works. Why I think it's really important to understand this story in particular. I know there's a lot of news grabbing our attention, but here's why I think this story really matters. First of all, I did an episode a while back on the censorship industry as a whole. So go back and listen to that episode if you want to understand the coordinated forces at a high level and how the censorship and information control machine is really, a, a, it's a full-on industry coordinated effort. Um, so I kind of take a step back and cover that in that episode. And I did mention in that episode these benign sounding think tanks that get inserted into our discourse and media and they're positioned as these like non-biased third party fact checkers almost. Um, the ASD or the Alliance for Securing Democracy is one that I mentioned. It sounds harmless enough, right? The Alliance for Securing Democracy. Cool. Sounds like some impersonal, expert, not almost nonprofit organization that's simply interested in making sure that people get good information so that we're ultimately protected, protecting our democracy from the bad, scary, mean, foreign information, right? Um, well, what we've just learned about Hamilton 68 gives us an actual, real-life picture of exactly how this type of manipulative partisan influence actually drives what we, you and me, hear and see on social media and on mainstream corporate media. And guess what? What I'm gonna lay out today, it's a, sh it's a total sham. Like literally fraudulent stuff that people in the media used to get fired for missing. So what is this Hamilton 68? Well, it's a digital, dashboard that claimed to track Russian influence, and it was the source of hundreds, if not thousands, of mainstream print and TV news stories back in the Trump years. So I want you to put yourself mentally in the time machine and go all the way back to the Trump era and all of the Russian disinformation sound bites you were peppered with every single day, like little BB guns just pinging us all the time. Like I'm just trying to make a sandwich and I hear Russian disinformation pelted into my head for the fourth time today by MSNBC. Do you remember that? The Hamilton 68 dashboard was headed by former FBI counterintelligence official and current MSNBC contributor Clint Watts, and it was funded by a neoliberal think tank, the Alliance for Securing Democracy. Whoa, there are our friends at the ASD again, just popping up to benevolently fund a Russian disinformation dashboard. Thank you guys, just securing our democracy over there. <laughs> Lucky us. SD Advisory Council includes, let me read this, neoconservative writer Bill Kristol, former ambassador to Russia Michael McFowl. It includes ex-Hillary for America chief John Podesta. Ugh, sorry. The name Podesta still gives me nightmares. And former heads or deputy heads of the CIA, NSA, and the Department of Homeland Security. 
Now, when I originally hear advisory council, I think of just these carefully curated, just heartfelt people coming together for a common cause, doing things really carefully. But the more I'm going to read on and tell you about this story, the more I start to envision more so like these guys were in a Washington DC bar after work one day and they see a guy in a MAGA hat and they get really mad and instead of beating the guy up, they decide to channel all of that hatred into something that totally undermines democracy and uh, just like totally undermines everything those people say like, yeah, let's blow some shit up. And then the next day they sober up and they're like, you guys, we have to think of like some kind of legit name for this. What do you think, since we our goal is to literally undermine democracy and make people think something that is false, what if we, you guys, called it the Alliance for Securing Democracy? Uh, that's more what I have in mind now. Read a moment directly from the story. News outlets for years cited Hamilton 68 when claiming Russian bots were amplifying an endless parade of social media causes. Examples include against strikes in Syria, Russian disinformation, in support of Fox host Laura Ingram, Russian disinformation, the campaigns of both Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, Russian disinformation times two, Hamilton 68 was the source for stories claiming Russian bots pushed terms like deep state, yeah, it was the Russians who thought of that one. (laughs) We couldn't have come up with that one on our own. Or hashtags like, get this, Hashtag Fire McMaster, hashtag Schumer Shutdown, hashtag Walk Away, hashtag Release the Memo, hashtag Alabama Senate Race, and hashtag Parkland Shooting, among many others. So what was the secret ingredient? If this is really just Russian disinformation, how did Hamilton 68 come about that? Well, the secret ingredient to Hamilton 68's an analytical method? A list. They just literally made a list of 600 Twitter accounts that they decided were linked to Russian influence activities online. So how how did they decide these accounts were linked to Russian influence? Because of what these accounts were saying and nothing else. That was their methodology, you guys. If you're hashtagging Schumer shutdown, you're obviously linked to Russian influence. I don't care that you're a middle school teacher in Kansas. It must just be that you are uh, linked to Russian influence. And therefore, we're going to add you to this list. And we're going to give off the little hint, like just a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that this list is really like directly Russian and or a Russian bot. Really, it's a middle school teacher in Kansas. But we're going to put it on this list and give off this outward effect, this sacred list of 600 Russian Twitter accounts. They're just like, like super Russian. Don't worry about how they're just like super duper Russian. This list of 600 Twitter accounts, Hamilton 68 never released it. Here was their rationale. The Russians will simply shut the accounts down. I'm trying to follow that line of reasoning. We wouldn't want the fake Russian propaganda, Russian influenced accounts to know that they're on this list because then they would just shut their accounts down and then we just like, I don't know, wouldn't have a list anymore because the accounts would be non-existent. I mean, this should have sent off all the red flags. Like, why won't they show us the list then? Why won't they just tell us which accounts are Russian bots or directly influenced by Russian propaganda intentions? Um, so all those reporters and TV personalities, and I'll tell you a few examples, but surprise, um, one media outlet I had never heard of before actually was a primary offender, our friend Rachel Maddow, who said famously, the Schmirish stops with you. And by stops, I mean just like, says, hey, what's up? I'm going to keep going. Um, She was a main offender. The Washington Post, super culpable. The New York Times, and the list goes on and on and on. But when they were giving you, feeding you these news stories about all this Russian disinformation, all that stuff about Laura, yeah, supporting her as Russian disinformation, you guys, we were being spoon-fed in regular, like just pelting doses to totally disregard 
certain causes and hashtags and perspectives because we were being told those no real Americans have those perspectives. Nobody in the world has those perspectives. Those perspectives are just like Russia trying to meddle in our affairs. So just wholly disregard it. Simultaneously, as our friends like Rachel Maddow and reporters at the New York Post or the, the Washington Post, excuse me, and the New York Times were spoon feeding that to you, they never even really knew what they were describing because all they knew is that some think tank funded dashboard has some list that they won't show us and they just claim, like, just trust us, you guys. We've done some super calculator, protractor, mathematical type stuff that's way above your head to determine that these are Russian linked accounts. Please. There's just one little hole in Hamilton 68's plan to claim there was a 600 account list and nobody else can see the list but trust us we know what's on the list and it's legit don't worry about it one problem with that um because unbeknownst to the rest of us but very well known within the walls of twitter twitter executives had access to the same data because hamilton 68 have requested it from them and so they were able to reverse engineer the list of 600 based on their requests for information and the data shared with hamilton 68 and so they came up with the list, and what they found shocked them. I'm going to read a few quotes from Twitter executives as released through the Twitter files' emails. These accounts, they concluded, are neither strongly Russian nor strongly bots. Quote, no evidence to support the statement that the dashboard is a finger on the pulse of Russian information ops. Quote, hardly illuminating a massive influence operation. Um, and there were other quotes in a little bit stronger terms that I won't read here, but they were basically like, this is bullshit. Um, so in layman's terms, the Hamilton 68 barely had any Russians on that list of 600. In fact, apart from a few retweet accounts, it's mostly full of ordinary Americans, Canadians, and British. It was a scam. So instead of tracking how Russia influenced American attitudes, Hamilton 68 simply collected a handful of mostly real, like the vast majority real, mostly American accounts, and described their organic conversations as Russian scheming. So we imagine it going like starting from this is Russia sourced and then moving forward into what they said. No, they, they reverse engineered that whole process over at Hamilton 68 and they, they they decided based on what they're saying organically based on their opinions and the facts that they're reporting and their opinions as they see them they reverse engineered that into it must be tied to Russian influence somehow otherwise why do they think the things that they think um Twitter immediately recognized these Hamilton driven news stories posed a major ethical problem for them at Twitter potentially implicating them Quote, real people need to know they've been unilaterally labeled Russian stooges without evidence or recourse, Roth wrote. So these people who were on this list had no idea that they were being used as pawns in Hamilton 68's in the ASD's game to manipulate the media and go, these are Russian. Oh, see, we have proof of Russian disinformation and influence on Twitter in these lists of 600 accounts without those people who are on that list ever having any idea. Can you imagine learning? Because Matt Taibbi has reached out to many, many people on this list and being like, how, how does it make you feel to know you're on this list? That you were what was being used to de describe and like paint the illusion of like what, the idea that was in most of our heads when we heard these news stories, which is like fake Russian driven, like meddling in our Twitter accounts. Like we should totally ignore that. How does it make you feel that they were using you on that list to paint that picture. Oh, I can't even imagine. Some Twitter executives badly wanted to out Hamilton 68. So they were in a real moral and ethical conundrum here because they're watching these news stories play out and they see the list and they're like, we know who's on this list and who is not on this list. Um, after Russians were blamed for hyping the hashtag Parkland shooting hashtag, one person at Twitter wrote this in an email. Why can't we say we've investigate and citing Hamilton 68 as being wrong, irresponsible, and biased? Leoel Roth wanted a confrontation. He said, quote, my recommendation at this stage is an ultimatum. You release the list or we do. So there were actual in internal conversations at Twitter about like, we need to call them out. Like, let's just give them an ultimatum. Either you show people this list of 600 Russian influenced accounts or we'll show people the list. However, 
There's always a however, isn't there? There were internal concerns about taking on the politically connected alliance for securing democracy. Let's pause and talk about that for just a quick sec. Quote from one Twitter executive at that time, quote, we have to be careful in how much we push back on the ASD publicly, said Emily Horn. Emily Horn then went on to become the White House and NSC spokesperson under the Biden administration. Another quote in an email, I, have, I also have been very frustrated in not calling out Hamilton 68 more publicly, but understand we have to play a longer game here. That was from Carlos Montjay, the future, he went on from Twitter to secure a role as senior advisor to transportation secretary Pete Buttigieg. In other words, let me just speak plainly for you. These people saw their futures and careers with the Democratic Party and politicians and said, let's not piss off the ASD. Let's just let them have this Hamilton 68 charade and leave it untouched because I kind of want to work for Pete. So these legitimate people, as one Twitter exec called them, these legitimate, actual, living, breathing, American mostly, human people, never found out that they'd been used as fodder for mountains of news stories about Russian influence. Because uh, we now have access to these lists, or this specific list through the Twitter files, they have begun finding out because Matt Taibbi, the reporter who broke this story and has reviewed all these files, reached out to a lot of the normal, legitimate human people on this list to let them know and see what they think. And I'm just gonna read a few of their responses. I'm shocked, says Sonia Mansour, who as a child lived through civil war in Lebanon. Quote, supposedly in a free world, we are being watched at many levels by what we say online. Another quote, this guy says, I've written a book about the U.S. Constitution, says Chicago-based lawyer Dave Shostokas. How I made a list like this is incredible to me. Another one, quote, when I was growing up, my father told me about the McCarthy blacklist, says Oregon native Jacob Levitch. As a child, it would have never occurred to me that this would come back in a force and broadly in a way designed to undermine the rights we hold dear. Even Twitter executives, by the way, were stunned to read who was on the list. Policy chief Nick Pickles, what a fun last name, about British comic, somebody who was on this list is a British comic, he, he wrote, a wind-up merchant. I follow him, and I wouldn't say he's pro-Russian. I can't even remember him ever tweeting about Russia. You think? Hamilton 68's like, yeah, we're still going to put him on the list. Uh, another quote. I'm listed as a foreign bot, said conservative media figure Dennis Michael Lynch. Quote, as a proud taxpaying citizen, charitable family man, and honest son of a U.S. Marine, I deserve better. We all do. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you on that one, Dennis Michael Lynch. Um, and I, I really respect people who go by all of their names. I'm going to read the last bit of this um, report by Matt Taibbi. He says, what makes this an important story is the sheer scale of the news footprint left by Hamilton 68's digital McCarthyism. The quantity of headlines and TV segments dwarfs the impact of individual fabulists like Jason Blair or Stephen Glass. So these were former media figures from way back who were fired for just sort of fudging um, some aspects of their reporting. You know, back in the day where like we held a few more people accountable than we do today. Remember that? Hamilton 68 was used as a source to assert Russian influence in an astonishing array of news stories. So things like the support for Brett Kavanaugh or the Devin Nunes memo, Russian disinformation. The Parkland shooting, Russian disinformation. Manipulation of black voters, suggesting that was Russian disinformation. Quote, attacks on the Mueller investigation. Those were painted as Russian disinformation in the news. These stories, what did they do? They raised fears in the population. And most insidious of all, they were used to simultaneously smear figures like Tulsi Gabbard as foreign assets and drum up sympathy remember we were in an election cycle for the presidential campaign drum up sympathy for political causes like joe biden's campaign being described um describing his critics as russian aligned think about how far-reaching the implications of this fraud were 
Incredibly and ironically, these stories were also frequented, frequently used as evidence of the spread of fake news on sites like Twitter. And I'm reading a headline here that's set from Mother Jones. That's probably the biggest offender of amplifying the fraudulent Hamilton 68 dashboard. This is a headline that reads, Trump supporters spread the majority of phony news on social media. Listen, I'm not a MAGA Republican, but this bothers me deeply that instead of countering people's opinions and points on their merit, there was this massive campaign coordinated by these neoliberal think tanks and our major media outlets that we go to all the time, or some of us don't anymore, but they were using that machine to tell us, ironically, that all of these people were spreading fake news and phony information. You guys, wow, wow. Let's cause a problem and in doing so, in the process, claim that the people we don't like and are implicating in our fraud are the ones who are actually causing the problem that we are perpetuating ourselves, which is fake news in this case. This is all, this is fake, 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 fake. This is all a complete sham and a fraud. It is, in my opinion, a psychological operation perpetuated by these people, perpetrated by these people. They infiltrated our very minds to believe that a whole slew of things that they didn't like that people were saying were ultimately traced back to Russian influence. And it's really, really wrong. And if you still trust the media at this point, I don't know what else to tell you. I guess all I can do is come back on a future episode and talk about more stories like this. Thank you for joining me for this shit show today. Lots of love. Take care of yourself and stay free. Did I just come up with a sign off? <laughs>